Wealth Research Group has interviewed over 200 guests in the past three years. None of them is so outspoken about the need to become free, to live like an anarchist and unshackle from the claws of the governments and the deep state like Jeff Berwick. In this interview, Wealth Research Group goes into detail about Trump's exoneration from Russiagate, which paves the way for winning the upcoming elections, about the yield curve inversion that predicted every recession of the past four decades, and Berwick gives his take of deep state scandals. Go to wealthresearchgroup.com slash top for the most important recession warnings now. Enjoy this great interview. Welcome to the Tons of Industry show. We're recording this right after the news that there was no Russiagate, at least not for President Trump involved. Uh, but according to Fox News, uh, there might be one for uh, Hillary and Obama involved, and they, they want to do an inquiry on, on those two. So regardless, today's guest is one of my favorite ranters. He pulls no punches, and he's considered one of the biggest blogging anarchists. In fact, the music industry has Tomorrowland, where people flock from around the world for an unforgettable experience, and the alternative media financial industry has an Arcapulco event founded by our guest today, Jeff Berwick, as the mecca of all gatherings. And Jeff, by the way, I'm on the other side of Mexico today as we're doing this on the Caribbean shores close to Cancun. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. And I want to start off by asking you about uh, this, uh, the Mueller report uh, out just now. No collusion, no evidence. Uh, this has been like the cloud that was overhanging Trump's approval ratings and, and uh, you know, all this talk about impeachment. And that, it's blown right open and I assume, you know, the approval ratings will keep soaring from here on. And it, it doesn't even seem like there's a Democratic um, candidate. It's like uh, the election is in one year and we only know that Trump is running. He, he, it looks like he's been in government for 20 years and will continue for 20 years more. It's, it's just an amazing accomplishment in terms of the brand uh, of Donald Trump around himself. But I want to ask you, uh, you know, just in general, I know you hate politics, um, <laughs> but I do want to know your opinion on this entire fiasco. Was it all a, a, a big distract? What is it to you? What, what does Russiagate mean to you? Uh, absolutely nothing. When I first heard about it, I thought it was a total joke. And uh, I don't really even care about this Mueller report because the thing that people need to realize more is that this entire thing is a big show. Uh, to me, politics in general, especially the U.S. government politics, is no different than World Wrestling uh, Federation or World Wrestling, WWE as they call it now. Uh, even Donald Trump was on those shows before. I think that's partly because they were getting him ready for this role. He's a reality TV star actor. They just make up all this stuff and they just keep this left right narrative going and keep a bunch of people believing this is like a real thing and that that they have to like cheer for one or the other. And, the, and the, they do that because as long as people continue to do that, they won't realize that they're abs absolutely slaves to the U.S. government. Uh, most people give about or get about half of the money taken that they make every year taken away from them. Uh, when they're not doing that, they're extorting and taxing literally everything else that you can imagine. When they're not doing that, they're putting people in cages uh, for doing little things that didn't hurt anyone. Uh, uh, that's, you know, there's so many people in, in U.S. jails. It's actually, for the U.S. population, there's six times more people in jails in the U.S. than any other country on the world, in, on the world uh, per capita. Uh, so uh, this whole thing is just uh, what they always do. So they put in Obama after Bush because Bush was more of the right guy. Uh, and then they put in the left guy and then all the right people got all angry. We've got to get him out. Then they put in Trump and then all the left people get angry and they keep putting up all these things like, oh, Russia gate or all this so, uh, so that people have something to fight over and, 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 and cheer for uh, while they don't realize and are distracted that they're complete and the total slaves. Now, OK, so, you know, the, the deep state is definitely a real force, a real entity behind uh, many of today's political events around the world, um, you know, it's not, even a, it's not even up for debate anymore. If you don't know what the deep state is, if you don't know how powerful it is, you can go back 50 years to the Eisenhower warning. But, you know, I, I, what I want to ask you is Washington just released that its February deficit is the monthly record for budget deficit, $234 billion. And that's in a 28-day calendar month. 
That's more than, you know, that's about eight billion a day in overspending. You're talking about $5.8 million a minute in overspending. So I want to ask you, you know, with this in mind, what should the American citizen do? What, what is the option? Because the six largest budget items that are killing the national debt are Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Income Security, Defense, and Education. What can Washington cut back on? What can they do austerity measures on if they even wanted to? Where is this money going to come from, especially when you cut taxes? Well, uh, this whole game is over. There's, there's absolutely no way to save the situation for the U.S. government. The U.S. government is essentially a large criminal organization. It's actually the biggest criminal organization in the world today. And all they're doing is extorting people in that place. So it's really funny to me that some people care that the U.S. government survives and it doesn't uh, end up going bankrupt. It actually, the faster it goes bankrupt, the better. And it's been beyond bankrupt now for years. So really what they're doing is just uh, spending as much money as possible, giving as much money to their uh, to their friends as possible. And this is all through the military industrial complex and the pharmaceutical industrial complex and all of that. Uh, taking billions and trillions of dollars away from Americans and giving it to all their friends uh, until the system collapses, which we're very close to that happening. Of course, I write the dollar vigilante and we're talking about in the next few years, the U.S. dollar is going to completely collapse. And that's because the U.S. government has gone into massive amounts of debt and the Federal Reserve, the only way to keep the system alive at this point is just to continue to print more money, and that's what they're doing, and that will eventually end up in hyperinflation. Uh, but going back to what you initially brought up about the deep state, uh, I've been talking about that for a long time. Of course, uh, a number of people just seem to be starting to wake up to it now, but there's big groups that control the U.S. government, and it's not Donald Trump. He has nothing to do with it. He's basically an actor, as I said. Uh, they always bring in these people to, to basically be teleprompter readers like Barack Drone Bomber and, and things like that. And, and the, uh, every other... Uh, major country in the world, including Russia, China, they're all controlled by the same people who control the U.S. government. So they keep all these little wars going. Uh, they keep all these trade wars going. Uh, they keep siphoning off money from everyone in the world uh, to themselves through central banking and all the governments, through taxation. Uh, and they try to keep people believing that this is all, uh, you know, the U.S. government's at, at war with the Russian government and all that. This has been going on for decades. It's, it's controlled by the exact same people. Uh, so that's the thing that people need to realize. And what's been very clear for uh, uh, more than a decade now is that they're going to bankrupt the U.S. Uh, completely, the U.S. government, uh, and they're probably going to move a lot of the prosperity uh, over to places like China and Russia now. And so that's what this whole uh, story is being set up. That So when the U.S. collapses, they're going to blame it all on China. China's going to go start doing very well. Then they're going to say there's going to be a war. More money goes into the military industrial complex. If they can, they'll start a war somewhere, usually uh, with a false flag attack, uh, and just continue the game. Who are the main actors in the deep state? What organizations, corporations, individuals, states, um, to you, what does the deep state represent? Uh, just so people can get the idea. I know, you know, uh, it's not even a secret today. Many of, many of today's most uh, epic TV shows depict the deep state uh, very openly because it's not, it's not part of the, of the fringe anymore. It's part of mainstream culture. People know about it, uh, but what they lack is more of a guidance as to, hey, this is considered a deep state, this is not, et cetera. And I want you know, people that, like you that have been investigating this for years and years, um, and actually I, I assume you've, you've even talked with people that are very close to uh, you know, the situation, Tell me a little bit more about what you consider as a deep state and who do you consider to be deep state and, 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 and sort of the operation, the, the, mat, the method to the madness. Well, as you brought up, uh, they have been actually coming out and being a lot more obvious about, uh, you know, that there is this uh, controlling force behind everything. And, of course, one of the words that some people use for it is Illuminati. And it was funny, my kids came up to me about a year ago, and uh, they had one, one of my kids had a uh, pyramid with an all-seeing eye a poster on his wall. And I said, uh, what's that doing on your wall? And he said, it's Illuminati. And I was like, you know what the Illuminati is? Like, yeah, apparently there's like a kid's TV show about it now. So what's happened is uh, these 
uh, generally the same people, the same families uh, for centuries now have been controlling much of the world. Uh, they used to control it through things like kings and queens, and we still see that in places like uh, England with uh, the queen is still alive somehow, <laughs> drinking baby's blood every day probably, but uh, you know, that's a lot of the, uh, the families that have been around for a long time. Of course, there's people like the Rothschilds, uh, who were essentially the people who started central banking a few hundred years ago, uh, and they actually started the, the, uh, the Illuminati in Bavaria in Germany on the exact same year that the U.S. was founded. It was very interesting, and, and uh, many of the people who were involved in the founding of the U.S. were Freemasons, and those are another, there's, there's all sorts of um, groups that are involved. So uh, you can call it the Illuminati, you can call it the, the banksters, it's the central banking cartel. Uh, you can also call it the Freemasons uh, at the highest levels, they're, they're involved. Uh, also the Jesuits, uh, to an extent the Zionists. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of uh, sort of uh, different groups involved, but all of these groups at the highest levels are actually controlling all these governments and central banks. You know, I want to ask you, how do you personally deal with this? What do you do that's under your control on a daily basis with your finances, with your mic that's in front of you, uh, that you use on, on, on your platforms? What does the average guy need to do in order to uh, create a situation where he's part of the solution in terms of you know, making the, the public know and obviously in terms of uh, protecting his own family and his, own, and his loved ones um, from the, a potential currency collapse, a, dollar, a de-dollarization escalation where this thing goes from whatever it is right now to double or triple the, the, the pace. And obviously what happens if we have sort of a bond Armageddon and, you know, people exit out of treasuries uh, in the next few years, creating a second 2008 scenario. Well, the first thing I was uh, trying to tell people is if you didn't know a lot of this about how the world's been run and who's actually been controlling it for the last few centuries, at least, uh, when, you when you first realize a lot of people can become quite upset or even depressed or very angry and all these things. To me, it's, it's not, it's just the way the world's been. Uh, it's, it's changing at the moment. We actually have the opportunity now to take a lot of the power back from those people through things like cryptocurrencies and, and things like that. And as these systems collapse, as they have to collapse, uh, we have the opportunity to rebuild them without these centralized control systems. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, general hope out there. And as well, you can also take advantage and profit profit from everything they're doing once you realize how it all works and here at the dollar vigilante we've we've made a lot of money we were into cryptocurrencies in 2011 uh, with bitcoin at three dollars it's now at four thousand uh, dollars and and that's because we recognize that this is a currency that could take away the central banking cartel's power and so once you realize that you can start investing in things and make a lot of money even things like precious metals we're very bullish on that right now if people out there have some assets and they don't own any gold or silver you should definitely be doing that and that's one one definite way to protect yourself as we enter into hyperinflation and as these currencies, the fiat currencies, all start to uh, basically go to zero, and, and all of them will, the euro will, the, the Chinese yuan will, all of them will. All, they're all fiat currencies, they're all in too much debt, the governments have too much debt, the central banks are all printing money like Keynesians, and, and it's all going to hyperinflate at one point. And very soon too, we're not talking about decades, we're talking about months or years at this point. Uh, so those are the things that uh, you should get into is things like cryptocurrencies, things like precious metals, uh, things like hard assets, things that a central bank can't uh, print away into, into worthlessness, things like real estate, but uh, not so much in places like New York or London because those have been built up on massive bubbles from massive money printing from the central banks. But uh, in other countries that are, haven't uh, had that sort of growth, places like Mexico, for example, I'm a huge, uh, a fan of Mexico. I love it here in Mexico. And uh, there's massive, uh, great deals in, in real estate um, in many areas of Mexico, all throughout Latin America, all throughout South America. Uh, Asia has a lot of opportunities, but basically get into hard assets and, uh, and get away from the banks because the banks are all going to implode as these uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, sorry, as these fiat currencies go into hyperinflation. Uh, so just basically get out of banks, get out of the stock market, get out of bonds, uh, get out of all the things that worked for the last 40 years and get into things like precious metals and cryptocurrencies and hard assets. And you know, um, in the past 48 years, gold has gone from 35 bucks an ounce to 13.21 as we're doing this interview today. Uh, but that's nominally, and people uh, don't realize. But in terms of covering the the currency supply, gold only covers seven percent of the currency supply today. If it covered 
the entire currency supply as it did for a few weeks in 1980 when it was valued at $850 per ounce, the price would be 14 times today's price. It would be near, nearing $20,000 an ounce for us to go back to that era where everything was affordable in 1980. So in 1980, the average U.S. salary was the closest to buying the, the um, um, Dow Jones in terms of affordability, whereas today it takes more than 400 hours for the average employee to buy one point of the Dow. That's how the wealth gap has increased. Um, and, and so what I want to ask you is about a rare event that just occurred a few days before this interview. The three-month to 10-year yield has inverted. In other words, you can make more money in lending the U.S. government money for three months than taking the risk and lending it for 10 years. That rare event only happens before a recession. It happened in 1999, it happened in 2007, and it's just occurred now. On average, between now and 300 days from now, which is a year and a half, the U.S. has always been in a full-blown recession. Uh, but before that, as you can see, 1999 and in 2007, we saw a huge rally leading up to it like there's nothing. Um, and I always likened it to a NASA mission where in the first few seconds, the, the, it's all beautiful. Everybody claps. But then if this thing fails, it goes down to, the, to earth and you forget all about your clapping. So I want to ask you, are you preparing for a recession? What are you doing personally? And more so, what can someone who has very little savings at this point do to protect themselves? Because most Americans don't have $400 to scrub for a medical emergency, according to surveys from many, many, um, you know, surveyors uh, in the past two years. So, you know, sh share with us a little bit about your concerns and what do you do personally and what do you advise people to do? Well, let me be very clear. We're definitely not headed towards a recession. Uh, when this next collapse happens, and this will happen, and it will happen soon, as you pointed out, we're now into in inverted yields, and I can explain a bit more about why that is. Uh, but we are not only the next collapse, and we've normally had them about every seven years. So 2001, there was one. 2008, there was one. In fact, that's where I, I started to realize that a lot of these uh, these collapses all happen on the Shemitah end day, which happens every seven years. But we've we're now about 10 years into this one. We have not had that major collapse yet. When we have it, it's not going to be a recession. There's not going to be even a depression. Uh, there's going to be something that we'll look back on at hundreds or even thousands of years from now and talk about the greatest depression of all time. Uh, this is going to be incredibly bad because the entire system is over. And I've been saying this for a while, a couple of years, but it's going, it's going to take a little while before it all happens, of course. But with the U.S. government now at $21 trillion worth of debt, and it was only at about $9 trillion when Barack Obama's regime came in. That was about 10 years ago. So we're looking at uh, the U.S. government's debt almost tripling in the last 10 years. And a lot of people said, oh, when Trump gets in, he's going to fix all that. He talked a lot about balancing the budget. Uh, almost every month they have a record U.S. government deficits. And uh, there's absolutely nothing you can do to stop this at this point. There's zero. Even if Ron Paul was president, all he could do is basically shut down the Federal Reserve, shut down every U.S. government uh, uh, department, and uh, and you know there would still be a depression, but that would be the end of it, and then people could rebuild from there. That's the best case scenario, uh, and obviously Trump's not going to do that. He's just been building it even more and more, the debt going up massively. So we're now, as I mentioned, twenty-two trillion dollars in debt. So even if interest rates went to ten percent, which is not a historically insane level whatsoever, in fact, it's a, a fairly normal historical level during certain periods of time. If you just do the math, 22 trillion, 10% of that would be $2 trillion per year just in interest, interest payments alone on the debt. That's almost the entire extortion tax base of the U.S. government. So uh, if interest rates start to rise, and that's what we're starting to see now, uh, and we will be seeing that. Uh, as a, if that happens, if the if the Federal Reserve uh, somehow keeps it you know down, uh, then we'll enter into hyperinflation. So we're either going to enter into a period where the U.S. government goes completely bankrupt, socialist insecurity goes away, uh, every sort of U.S. Uh, sort of thing, Medicare, Medicaid, all that is bankrupt. Uh, the FDIC, the, the thing that's supposed to back up the insurance of the banks, it's already bankrupt. Uh, the U.S. Post Office, of course, is bankrupt. Everything's bankrupt. 
bankrupt. Uh, and uh, people will start to realize that. So they won't get access to any of those sort of things. Social security will stop. Uh, older people out there should realize that. Younger people should know that they were never going to see it anyway. It's a big Ponzi scheme. Uh, and uh, we're going to see uh, the, the craziest uh, collapse of all time. And it's going to happen in the next few years. And it's so amazing to me that when you ask people about uh, you know, it's not even possible. People think, no, it's not even a possibility when it's absolutely a certainty. We're at the end of this system. So people should get prepared for it. And like I said, just get some cryptocurrencies, get some precious metals, maybe some hard assets. Make sure you've got some food in your house because even during the 2008 financial crisis, and this one's going to be 10 times worse, uh, the food system for the entire world almost stopped because it's all based on bank credit for the shippers. Uh, so for a few days, no one knew which bank was liquid and almost all uh, shipping have uh, stopped in the world for a couple of days and that's where most uh, food comes to places like the u.s is actually from around the world now so you will actually see grocery stores uh, emptied out in a matter of a couple of days uh, once this all starts to happen and this will happen in the next couple of years there's no way this does not happen uh, there if you just understand math if you understand economics and if you understand what's going on it's baked in the cake that we're going to have a incredibly extreme crisis in the next few years uh, it's just a matter of when and it could be tomorrow it could be months and it could be maybe a few more years, but I really doubt much more than that. We're, we're very close to the end of this. What we do know for sure is that uh, no central bank or, or I should say no reserve currency is held for more than 100 years. And this is uh, reaching the point where it's going to be soon, um, uh, you know, reaching this, this 100 year threshold for the US dollar and they've abused the currency since 2008 in a major way. Um, you know, transitioning a little bit to towards uh, what's going on right now in Europe and the fact that Europe is, is uh, creating a situation where they have demographic problems, uh, negative growth for the population where they have immigrants coming in. We're talking about a huge trade partner for, for Europe, a huge trade partner for um, North America and the United States. Where does Europe play into your geopolitical environment? Obviously, with Brexit on, on the horizon, Germany's not looking uh, good. Italy's switching over from a U.S. alliance to a Chinese alliance. Um, they're they're joining the one ro uh, one road one, one belt initiative. There are many changes that are going on. You had the deputy prime minister of uh, Italy looking to rep repatriate the gold from the central bank. Basically saying the, the gold is, is uh, of the people, not the central bank, creating this distance between the, uh, the central bank of the country and the, the people of the country, which is very unique um, because, you know, everyone assumes, hey, the central bank is our bank. This is our country's bank. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you, you know, I, I want to ask you about, about this entire fiasco in Europe because whatever happens in Europe, it trickles to the rest of the world. It's a very, uh, it's one of the most developed economies, one of the most developed regions. And it's 20% uh, of the world's currency is the euro. So, you know, your thoughts on, on Europe in general. Europe's been a mess for a while, and it's just getting worse and worse by the day almost now. It, it's kind of funny when I hear people like Bernie Sanders, the communist, uh, pointing out how uh, uh, socialism works really well in Europe. No, it doesn't. Europe has been falling apart now for decades. Well, let's talk about which countries we're even going to talk about. Greece, we know how bad that's been. Uh, that's an absolute disaster. Banks closed for months and it's still got major, major problems. Uh, look at places like Spain. Spain has been with uh, youth unemployment of 50%, uh, rate, uh, normal unemployment of 30% now for years. Uh, there's been massive sort of movements to get rid of government there. In fact, they didn't have a government for a while and actually things started to improve because of that. Uh, look at France, the Yellow Valley movement. They've had millions of people protesting now for months. They want to get rid of the government. Everyone's saying that they can't afford to live anymore with all these taxes, with all the socialist sort of things, uh, with the tax on uh, absolutely everything in the country. And then, the, of course, the European Central Bank printing lots of euros and making it so it destroys the economy uh, as they do that. So you're seeing Europe uh, just a total disaster, and it's going to get far, far worse. Uh, and uh, a lot of people talk about Brexit and things like that. And I said they weren't going to allow England to Brexit. 
exit, uh, even if there was a vote for it. These votes don't matter <laughs> whatsoever, and they're usually rigged anyway. Uh, but uh, they're not. They're going to do everything they can to try to keep uh, them in in Europe, and that'll just be even more of a disaster uh, for England if they end up staying in Europe. So Europe's an absolute disaster. The euro, I've said for a while, should be one of the first fiat currencies to fall. It's a complete and total disaster. It was never even possible for it to work in the first place. You can't have uh, 20 or 30 different countries, all with different sort of governments doing different sort of financial uh, budgets and things like that, and have one currency and print up a, a, a you know, a ton of money for that currency and have it all work. It just, it really does not work and it, it would never have worked. And it's, it's surprising it's even worked this long. So the euro will be going down soon. Uh, I think the only one that could beat it is the Japanese yen because Japan actually has something like 300% debt to GDP at this point. It's almost triple what the U.S. has. Uh, so Japan government is, is totally done. The yen will probably go first, uh, the euro quite soon after that. And then uh, we'll see most currencies in the world all uh, collapsing, and, and one of them will be definitely the U.S. dollar. So uh, for people out there, if you're not into precious metals or hard assets or some cryptocurrencies uh, to protect yourselves, you're waiting until the last minute. These, these, all these systems are going to collapse, and, and Europe's definitely uh, on, the, on the leading edge of it. If you just look at what's going on over there, especially in places like France, uh, absolute disaster. I, I know many friends in Germany, and they tell me how hardly anyone can even afford to survive anymore with all the taxes and, and, and the regulations and, and all those sorts of things. So uh, Europe's in, in a rough uh, shape, and it's going to get even worse from here, in my opinion. Jeff, let's talk a little bit about what happened uh, in the recent uh, in Arcapulco. You had great guests there, great speakers. It, it was just uh, a few weeks ago that you held the event. Um, can you know talk about a little bit about the hot topics that everyone uh, brought to the table, uh, what everyone is uh, is thinking about over there, uh, because this is the event where ideas for the rest of the year, um, you know, definitely trickle into YouTube and uh, the blogging industry, and I, and everyone wants to know if if they missed it, what's uh, you know what what was held in, in Acapulco 2019. Well, I should let you know that you can actually buy all the videos from every speech of Narcopoco, uh, as well as all the Dollar Vigilante Summit videos. I think the URL is dollarvigilante.com slash 2019 VOD or VOD 2019, one or the other, try them both. And um, you can buy all the videos. So if you if you want to see them, check them out. And there's so many amazing uh, talks on there. It's really life-changing sort of information. But to give you some information about what happened, uh, yeah, it was about 2,000 people for our annual sort of gathering. And really the, the, the focus has changed over the years. When we first started five years ago, it was a lot of anger about the governments and central banks. But now it's a lot more about uh, you know, healing yourself and fixing yourself and, and becoming the change you want to see in the world. And I think that's really true. Like you, you really can change the world by changing yourself. And uh, so that's a lot of the focus of, of uh, people come to Narcopoco and it's a lot more of a celebratory sort of uh, uh, thing now. And, and basically we're trying to build, get the world ready and start building the, the, the next world after all this collapses uh, and start to create things that make uh, the governments and central banks are obsolete, things like cryptocurrencies. So uh, there's a huge cryptocurrency portion of the event called CryptoPoco, which happened every day of the event this year. You can get all those speeches as well by going to that URL I gave you earlier. So uh, tons of things going on. The cryptocurrency space is nowhere near, I, I know a lot of people think it's dead. Uh, it's nowhere near dead. It's going, it's definitely near the bottom now uh, after uh, going down throughout it, all of 2018. But uh, this is now the time to get back Back in and of course we said about a year ago to start selling cryptocurrency and take profits and put it into precious metals and, and so now basically I'm saying that we're uh, get back into cryptocurrencies it's close enough to the bottom to, to get back in and we recommend about a 20% of your assets be in cryptocurrencies and about 60% be in precious metals or precious metals related things and other hard assets so uh, that's what we recommend to the Dollar Vigilante. And for people out there, you can sign up to our newsletter. And this is where we give you more specific information. You just go to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe. Hey, Jeff, thank you very much. I was going to ask you where can people get more information, but you obviously just let everyone know. And um, we'll definitely circle back in a few months. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. The national debt of the United States has reached an ungodly size. The biggest problem they face is that the demographics are not supporting this increase in entitlements due to boomers. Wealth Research Group has published three detailed reports on this subject. 
Make sure you hit wealthresearchgroup.com fed to understand the complex issues facing the central bank. wealthresearchgroup.com enemy to educate yourself on the strife between Trump and the Fed. And wealthresearchgroup.com dead to truly realize the grave situation the dollar faces.